Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast, I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Hello, this is Clyde J. Kale, and this is Monday, July the 27th. This is episode 56 of the Artist Friends Podcast, and I am here with my two best artist friends, Constance and Diane. Hello, Diane. Hi, Hi Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hello, Diane. Hello, Clyde. Hi- Hello, everybody. Last week, it was just me and Diane because Constance had some uh, air conditioning problems. I, was just, I think she got some of that resolved. We're glad to have you back with us, Constance. We missed you. I'm glad to be back. <laughs> I'm still having a few air conditioning woes, but I'm working around them. <laughs> okay. Now, the recommended video for our subject for this episode, episode 56, um, was uh, talking about our painting technique and maybe uh, giving a definition or presenting some artist terms for our listeners who are non, non-artists, non our non-artist listeners. And uh, if you go to www.talkartpodcast.com, that's talkartpodcast.com, you can see the uh, recommended video links and uh, get an idea of what we're talking about. And what always amazes me is that, uh, like with any industry industry segment, as artists, when we get amongst ourselves, we do we util- utilize what we call um, art speak and terminology that we understand ourselves. Self, and if we're not careful when we're talking to non-artists. We just blow them away. <laughs> we blow them away completely. Uh, I, I'll give you an example. Um, I uh, was talking to my mother. You know, she was she's just just completely uh, uh, excited and happy about that. I you know finally I'm pursuing a professional art career because you know she's always encouraged my my creativity uh, while I was young, and she never thought I would ever uh, really pursue it pursue the uh, artist's life. So uh, I was, you know, talking to her about, uh, you know, painting, and I was saying, uh, you know, that the, the, uh, the talking about the, the colors, you know, I, I like to use the, uh, sometimes with a still life, I like to paint in the a la prima, especially with these oils. And uh, I, prim- I use most of my primary colors and uh, mix all my other colors to get a uh, really good shade and uh, to, uh, and then tint my hues. 
after I said that, my mother, who is so straightforward, said, what the hell did you just say? Are you speaking Italian to me or what? <laughs> then I realized what I was doing. You know? I said, whoa, 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 yeah, yeah, okay, mom, I'm sorry. <laughs> because my mother is not an artist, and she is not educated on the uh, art speak <laughs> whatsoever. So I had to break things down. But it got me thinking, how often – do we as artists we end up doing that you know and uh when we meet uh people that uh, uh non-artists or people that we're trying to sell our paintings to you know that we 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 end up uh going into uh art speak uh diane give an example what kind of artist are you <laughs> i am an impressionistic representational artist <laughs> <laughs> people might not know what that means. Absolutely. I mean, I think most people know what realis realism is. I mean, but impressionistic is a little less um, like it's more an impression of something, not um, the exact duplicate of what you see. So it's sort of a combination of two types. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, yeah, I, from somebody that doesn't really know that, I guess it would be really difficult to understand that. Don't You don't think about it. You just assume people understand you know, the terms and stuff, and you don't really stop to think about it a lot of times. Yep. And <clears throat> we have to learn the art speak, especially whenever we are talking to when we uh, meet gallerists and art creators and uh, – professional collectors and professional dealers because they expect that, you know, if we, if we come up and we say, well, you know, I just use a lot of bright colors and, uh, and I, I paint what I see. They're going to, okay. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. but as, as you know, we have to remember when we are speaking to non artists and the, the other people, the common people, I guess. Is the word. <laughs> well, I think that's true of any, um, any kind of career or whatever, you, you know, within that career, you have your own lingo kind of, and, you know, the people that are in that same um, demographic or, you know, they understand what you're saying. But when you talk to somebody outside of that, <laughs> they have no clue what you're talking about a lot of times. Absolutely. Yeah, Constance, that's story. Constance, what, kind, what kind of artist are you? I'm definitely an impressionistic painter and also sometimes an abstract painter um okay now break that down to, into the common man's language <laughs> if you guys could see her right now she's a deer, a deer in the headlights <laughs> yeah well with abstract art you just kind of make up a composition as you go with the colors that you've chosen on the color wheel that you want to use and then you just manipulate it on the canvas to have a composition which can be very loose and abstract but with impressionist painting you still use a color wheel to get your paint your you know the colors that you want to use in your painting but um it's not, it's representational, but it's impressionistic, impressionistic paintings are not like photographs. That's realism. Realism is almost like a photograph. Impressionism is taking it away from being a photograph and looking more painterly. And I know that's a pa painterly is a term that artists use but it takes it and makes it more painterly. I don't know what, what is another good word to use for painterly? Um, uh, where you could. Uh, looser, looser and not so um, photorealistic. Right. Right. The brush strokes are, the brush strokes are more visible. They have more of, and I'm using another painter, painter term, impasto, which means that there's thicker paint. Okay. to make your 
to make your <laughs> to make the impression of whatever it is you're painting like a leaf or something this is hard isn't it this is hard yeah, it is hard it is it's hard you know to come across and i mean is it's like a show doctor trying to tell you what kind of a heart trouble you have and you're gonna have to do something about that heart but not use you know use people terms <laughs> to tell you what he's gonna have to do to dissect your heart and make it better <laughs> but still you know when you're painting impressionistic style the brush strokes are going to be more visible there's going to be thicker paint um most, and, the thing is what what i when i'm talking to people most people understand or, or know who vincent van gogh is so i'll say well kind of like his paint not exactly like his style but kind of like his style you know, because, you know, he was considered, but he still was an impressionist. He was considered a post-impressionist uh, to use the, you know, the, the uh, art history uh, lingo. But uh, in his a lot of the terms are easier to um, show somebody than they are to try to describe it. Absolutely. You know, and it's really, um, yeah, <laughs> it's you much know. easier to see it. <laughs> And, you know, like, you know, Van Gogh, if you look, you know, you could see his brush strokes and, and you know, the, the, the marks of the brush and the paint on the canvas and the uh, the bright colors, vivid colors. And these. these yeah, Monet was an impressionist uh, and his brush strokes are visible and the color is or more yeah, vivid you know, the color, and the, light, uh, the, you know, the, the thickness of the paint was more thick than. I mean, for a realist, realism, they don't even want you to see a brush stroke. Absolutely. Um, if you see a brush stroke, then that's offensive. <laughs> you know, that's how they see it. Yeah. Um, and then they've got what they call hyperrealism, where they actually, it's, it's just a photograph, you know. <laughs> Basically, it looks just like a photograph. Pretty much. But that in itself is a whole genre of painting that people like. like and yeah you know you yeah. know it's pretty cool in itself i think you know because it takes a lot of skill to master something like that but i can't i can't paint that tightly Me neither. <laughs> however what i will say when i you know my little spill you know as i'm a uh you know a uh you know i always use a, an emerging artist uh with a uh, i i uh create works in in watercolor and uh, acrylic and oil paints and pen and ink with a tight illustrative hand. <laughs> the first time I told my mother that, she said, so you draw, right? <laughs> and she knew what illustrate meant. <laughs> I said, yeah, but I draw with paint. Oh, how's that different? Oh, and that, we had another hour conversation, I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to explain. <laughs> I, so really, talking to my mother is a good is good exercise for me to you know to learn how to uh, talk with the uh, you know common people to you know explain my art you know and uh, it, uh, mm -hmm. but it, it's hard. It's really difficult because we get so used to to uh, our art speak that when we have to uh, describe our art to people, it. Uh, it gets difficult, you know, and uh, some of my work is, you know, more illustration. If you think of uh, drawings and, and uh, like cartoon like, you know, and, and uh, images that used to be in magazines, you know, that uh, some of my work is style is a bit of that. And uh, then, of course, my painting, what I'm trying to by taking this course with Kelly Folsom, you know, I'm trying to loosen up. Trying to get loose, you know, so that my paintings have, you can see more of the brush strokes, you know, especially with oil painting, which is really wonderful for that. You know, I'm trying not to blend so much because I'm, but I'm still, I'm still too tight. <laughs> I've, I've got to, you know, you know, loosen up and uh, I got to create what's called, what Stefan Bauman calls it, happy accidents, you know, and uh, when uh, I think it was, Maybe it was the last episode, Diane, or the episode before that when we were talking about uh, perfectionism. You know, I'm still too much of a uh, perfectionist. I think that's uh, keeping me from, uh, from loosening up 
you know, and throwing the paint. But you need to watch one of Jerry Jerry's. Uh, he has a whole little talk that he does about perfectionism. Was it Jerry's not Jerry's Artorama? He yeah. has a little thing about perfectionism. You could watch that one. Yeah, well, that's what uh, I. I was referring to, I think Diane, we, it was one of our recommended videos, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, we, uh, we had talked, you know, I, I talked a bit about that. First thing I said to Diane was Diane, you're a perfectionist. And she admitted it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, one of the things I got from his, his thing was that, uh, the master says that if you have, once you have failed so many times, he told the student, that until you have failed, I have failed more times than you have tried, then you become more of a master. It's a, you know, you have to keep trying and trying and trying and in, in, in your failures, that's how you learn to become a master. Yep. Go watch that one of I with Jerry's that. about becoming a mass, perfectionist master. When I was learning how to draw and stuff, I copied a lot. I mean, and I wanted it to be an exact copy. And I'd, <laughs> I'd draw something over and over and over again until I got it, you know, as, as exact as I could get it, as, you know, as perfect <laughs> as, I, <laughs> as I thought it was. And, you know, so that's kind of where that came from, I guess. But, um it, doing a lot of things, you have to learn all the um, the the rules of you know what whatever it is, so that you know how to break them later. Like, <laughs> and you know yeah. what's important, what to keep, and what what to throw away, and you know. So a lot of that is just from um, lear the learning process. That you try to well, it's like it's like it's like exercise i think we've used that knowledge before you know an athlete you know that uh, goes you know bodybuilders and and runners and you know they <laughs> have to keep uh you know exercising you know those those muscles before they get better uh, artists the same way you know uh and the, the well, you have the hand eye coordination that you have to you have to get your brain to connect to your hand so that you can put the mark where you want it to go and not just anywhere. Absolutely. You know. And that takes yeah. a lot of practice. It. Right. So that becomes second nature, you know, that like, you're you know, not. Stephen Bauman, you know, you know, and that the one recommended video when he talked about, uh, you know, he, he shocked his students. He said, uh, you know, uh, the idea of uh, painting and then when you're done, throw your paintings away. And the students were like, what? Yeah. <laughs> he said, because he says, it's just, they're exercises. You're exercising your brain. The more you paint, the better you get at it. So you just have to keep, so he said, so not, he says, as you proceed, you're going to be embarrassed by some of your early work. So he said, just, you know, throw these, uh, you know, throw, so throw these things away. Of course. I liked his analogy to piano learning the or any instrument really learning to play the, mm -hmm. the you know the piano oh, yeah. you practice and practice you don't record all that <laughs> and you know, you know even uh -huh. if you did you'd never go back and listen to it absolutely so, yeah, yeah i mean okay there's some well, some points to that <laughs> not looking let, back at your take a, let's take a brief break and uh, we have sponsors now so let's take a break for our sponsor available at www dot mpir shop dot com are some unique design take a look at my work and if you like my style i could create a piece of artwork for you maybe you have that favorite pet that cat or a dog or boat car or maybe a truck or maybe a house or a vacation spot designed by me and they are at a very reasonable price too so please visit mpir shop dot com please send your commission requests to cjkl at sign mystery dash otr dot com that's cjkl at sign mystery dash otr dot com and let's create some beautiful art together again mpir shop dot com that's www dot mpir shop dot com 
And welcome back. And you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 56. Did I say that right? Yeah. I always get those numbers messed up. Episode 56 for July the 27th, and I'm here with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And we're talking about uh, painting technique and art speak and uh, talking to uh, common people. I don't want to say normal people because it's like putting us on a pedestal. Like we're, we're the elite. Artists aren't. Artists. <laughs> artists are not the elite. At least I never think, think of myself as the elite. But, uh, you know, I guess that non artists. So. Yeah, non artists. Yeah. Just yeah. the your ordinary folks. Now, in the video from Mikey that was recommended, you know, he said 14 terms, artist terms that are embarrassing if you don't know. I'm not going to go down through the 14 terms. We've already mentioned a couple of them. But uh, I just uh, jotted down a few, and let's get uh, Diane and Constance to explain them in normal terminology uh, if, they even, if they're not embarrassed. Not <laughs> 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 knowing the meaning of the term. So here is a term, shade. That's for Constance. Constance, what is a shade? When they're talking about painting and drawing or whatever, what's a shade? A shade is when you add black to a pure color. Bingo. She gets an A for that, folks. <laughs> Short and simple. That's what it is. What's a tint? Me again? Yep. <laughs> a tint is when you add white to a pure there you color. Go. Yeah, they both go hand in hand. Shade and tint. It's that simple. When you hear an artist saying, Say, well, you know, I, I like working in multiple shades. Okay, what they're saying is they like working with colors uh, added, multiple colors with black added. That's simple. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and when you put that all together, that becomes more of a uh, monochromatic or a chromatic type painting, you know? <laughs> it's all the same color. It's just got different uh, different shades by the adding of black or different tints by the adding of white. Okay, here's one. I know Diane is not going to know this. Well, I don't know. If she watched the video. She probably will. What's a fugitive color? <laughs> fugitive colors are colors that are not light fast. They, um, in the light, in the sunlight, they'll fade out eventually and disappear. <laughs> Some of them. Yep. Those, uh, and I like his, uh, uh, Mikey's uh, definition. He said they're, uh, yeah, they're not very light fastness and they came about because of the uh, commercial art industry, you know, and uh, commercial artists had to do mock-ups for uh, the uh, fashions and, and whatnot. And they used the real bright colors, the uh, gouache. Yeah. Yeah. Which they, is less light fast anyway. Yep. And uh, they're real, real bright and you know, and then in the era when black lights came about and, you know, in the seventies and eighties, you know, and even up to the nineties when black lights were still popular, you wanted to use fugitive colors to, to uh, get that black light to pick up. And so you can go, wow, you know, and get high without, <laughs> taking, without, without taking any, any dope. Of course, some of them did take dope that enha enhanced it even further. <laughs> that was always, a, they're always real, real bright and, and snappy and, yeah, there, there's a possible place for them, but the, the key point is they they will fade, you know, with time. They okay. don't hold up underwear. <laughs> That's it. Now, we've mentioned these before, uh, plain air. When uh, Diane says she's a plain air artist. In normal speak, plain air, what's, what's that? Nothing outside, <laughs> basically. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what we always used to say, and like t the the term now has become come a big thing to say. Plain air. We never used to call ourselves plain air painters years ago. Yeah, I used so to be was, a floor painter. But yeah, you just go outside and paint. There was, a, there was <laughs> paint a, some life. There was a magazine, you know, a national magazine, outdoor painters, you know. And now I think they changed the title. Now they call them plain air painters. They know? did change the titles of that. Yeah, and so the why, term plain air has been around since you know back in the impressions time when they were outside painting, that's like they were the ones that first started going outside and painting and they 
you know, that's what they called them. Well, it was all a French term, and that's where they were in France, so <laughs> yep. in plain air. So yep. uh, that's kind of how it came about. But, here's one. Here's one for uh, Constance. A la uh, prima. A la prima. Yes, that's painting it all in one session. Probably the only Italian that you speak. <laughs> <laughs> This is an Italian term, alla prima. I paint alla prima. C C. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's painting. Now, baby. <laughs> painting, painting, completing a, a painting in one setting, and in the case of using oil, it's also uh, wet on wet. You're not given yes. time for the paint to dry. You know, uh, some you know more uh, traditional paint. I think Diane. Diane, you don't paint much out of Prima, do you? You're well, plain air painting is basically out of Prima. But yeah. um, I, I don't paint that way usually in the studio. Unless I'm doing a short study, like then I'll do it. But um, yeah. you know, I like, like to paint. paint. Like, yeah, I like to paint out of Prima. And since since I've been getting into oils, I am liking I am liking it too. I, I am really liking it. I... Uh, I had my doubts about it, you know, but then when I started painting with oil and saw just oh, how fantastic you can blend the colors and, and it's just, it's, it's addictive. It's very addictive, you know? And yeah. You get tired. Yeah, I might go back. I might go back and touch up the next day. Something I can't get to stick on where I want it to stick on because it's just so yummy and gooey gooey and i want to highlight where i can and i just can't get the highlight to stick on because it's just gotten to that point where it's just yummy and gooey that right there where i want the highlight well, I, i've done so it. Let it set up for a day and then i'll go back and put a highlight i've done the same thing a couple oil paintings that just it, they just weren't you know they weren't coming like that painting of that catfish that i did it, it just wasn't coming good i operating had to, I had too much, green, too, yeah, too much green in it, so I set it aside, and it took almost, almost, because I had so much paint on. It took almost three weeks to dry, but then when it was dry to touch, I went back and painted over it. And but for the most part, most of my oil paintings are all all a prima in one setting, and uh, either from a photograph or from a live setting, and. It just, I can't say enough about it. I enjoy it. I really enjoy pushing that paint around. It just, you know, like Stefan Bauman says, luscious, put that luscious paint on there with luscious, bold brush strokes, <laughs> which is helping me to get loose because I still paint tight. Even all prima, I'm still, I want to make sure I, it's almost like number paint. I want to get it in, in the lines and, uh, the art course that we're taking with uh, Kelly Folsom, she says, oh, forget about the line. You got a little sloppy, let it go. You know, it's, it adds character, you know, <laughs> in her. Yeah. Cause all, she's she's going to loosen you up, Clyde. Yeah. You see it. Yep. The the lessons I've been doing, I, I've been, uh, you know, getting loosened up a little bit. And um, which that term, all the premium term, goes into the term of uh, imp in, uh, impasto. And mm -hmm. uh, Di Diane, you want to? Want to take that? Constance just mentioned about that. I mean, the thicker paint and yeah, um, yeah. So that's, that's what it means, folks. Just a normal term. It's just it's just thick paint, you know. And sometimes you want thick paint, and that's like uh, Kelly Folsom. Something I never even considered in in one of her uh, videos. She talks about it, says for your background, you don't you want it to be thin paint, but for your items up front. That you use impasto. That's where you put your thicker paint because it, it, it draws your eye. The yeah, it, draw, it draws your eye. And instead of like, you know, Stephen Bauman always uses the term uh, focal point, you know, as, as his, uh, you know, as a, the item. I like uh, Kelly's term for that. She says, the star of the painting. <laughs> yeah, you you want the do you want Where's the, the star of the show? <laughs> yeah, the star of the show. That's what she calls it. I, I think the light giver is the star of the show. You have to figure out where is the light giver, the star of the show. Right. Then you work around all that. And when in, in creating your competition. So we went through the terms, and uh, you two described your painting. Now, one more time. 
but this time instead of saying it in the using the term diane what kind of painter are you <laughs> um, i think my impression of realism <laughs> okay i guess that yeah yeah, at least you didn't use the, you know, the, I'm an impressionist, realistic painter. No, you, you yeah, you, <laughs> you, paint, you paint what is in your eye, what you see, your impression of that object or that scene or that item that, that you're painting. Right. Okay, Constance, your turn now. To describe what I, what kind of painter I am. What kind of painter you are, but not, not using art speak, using normal <laughs> yeah, I know this is hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, some terms are, are pretty commonly known, I think, like abstract. I think most people know what abstract yeah. is. Yeah, don't use and realist, real And something realistic is. I mean, there are certain terms that pretty much everybody knows. but Yeah, because they've come across them, you know. Yeah. Well, how do you describe <laughs> all of Prima? Ala prima, ala prima, um, I'll give you a hint. Wet, sitting, all, at one, yeah, all at one time. Well, okay. Wet on, I paint wet on wet. There you go. And, yeah. <laughs> and um, not realistic. Okay. Not, and then with the abstracts, it's just... I don't know how to describe that. I use the color I, wheel. We had, pick out my I colors. Had a, uh, we had a uh, guest artist on here with one of our episodes, uh, Kushlani, who is more of an abstract painter. And she gave a definition, which I had never really thought of. Because I asked her, I said, because I usually, I don't tend to, to like too much abstract, you know, artwork. And, I mean, I don't do any at all. My brain just doesn't function that way. But um her definition of an asset it's not so much as what you see but it's how you feel the emotion it creates when you look at the painting which i thought was a pretty good definition you know so you either like it or you don't like it or it causes an emotion in you you know or or you uh, you connect you know with with the artwork and that's a good, yeah, a good definition for abstract because abstract can be a, like Jackson Pollock became famous for gripping house paint on on the canvas on the floor. I mean, <laughs> or just even tubes of paint. He would just squeeze out paint off of the tube and just stick it on there. Yep, <laughs> cigarette butts, even washers and <laughs> screws and so you know it's 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 kind of expanded because then when this would get us into a whole another discussion of modern art which i don't want to go down that road <laughs> <laughs> so i think we're just about out of time i hope for our listeners that this has cleared up some of the confusion and that our non-artists especially our non-artist listeners and you can um, understand the next time you encounter that wacko crazy looking artist talking about their art you're uh you're... yeah you know and i want to say like i don't think um it's that big of a deal if you don't know what a term means just ask i mean yeah <laughs> a lot of yeah. artists don't yeah. even know what some of the terms are so it's not anything to be embarrassed about like if you don't no. know what's... don't be intimidated just go up and ask the artist i mean <laughs> heck half the time they're intimidated <laughs> Or in this case, you know, or not, you tell you know, know. Are trying to, are us trying to describe what things are, you know, I mean, we're not anything special. So, and, hey, as you look at, our, yeah. like, as you look at the, the now with, you know, with COVID-19, everybody's still pretty much, you know, hunkered down in their homes. So we're not going to very many art shows. We're not going to art museums because of the, you know, the, the uh, fear of uh, catching the virus. So we're doing it all online. There's a lot of art online and everything. So uh, when you come across an artist's website or a uh, particular painting or something, hey, at your fingertips, direct message and email, you know, and ask, yep. hey, ask them about that painting. Artists will be delighted. I know I am very delighted if I receive an email asking me about my particular work and uh, what style it is and, and uh, what motivated me. Believe me, that artists like 
we like that kind of feedback, don't we, Diane? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we do. Yeah, constants. Okay. Okay, let's wrap this up. And you have been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 56 for July the 27th. And I've been, we've been talking with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And I'm going to say good, goodbye and good night to my two best artist friends. Good night, Diane, and good night, Constance. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Constance. Good night, everyone. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Thanks for stopping in. Good night, folks. Thank you so much for listening. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or a star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.